the church. Uh huh. They're the worst at this. I don't know if they're the worst, but it's their pride within church, yes. So tell me why you're so bad and the rest of us are so good. <laughs> being Mr. Church being guy. Being Mr. Church guy. All right, yes, great. Um, so the church is really bad at being prideful about stuff sometimes. Well, okay. I Okay. Societally, mm-hmm. we're all bad. Right. With with pride. Mm-hmm. Okay. And yes, the church the church has a pride problem. Mm-hmm. And and to be honest with you, it it actually always has. And the church I feel like the problem with the church Okay. This is where this is where my brain was going with this question. Okay. Is that the church feels like that since they got God behind them. Okay. They're the best. You, more than everybody else. Yeah, and that can right. Yeah, and that can that definitely can be the case. Okay. Sometimes. And and what's interesting is if you break that down even to a smaller microcosm of it, some churches think they're better than other churches because they're doing the God thing better. Right. Or they have more of God on their side. Or more people. Or more people. Right. And so I think there's a lot of levels of um, of pride within churches. Um, and so I think it manifests itself in different ways. So, for example, one way, you've got members who are prideful because of their role or their status as being influencers within the congregation. Mm. And like, that's kind of their thing. Like that's, that's where they get their value, their status from is their, whether it's because they have more money or whether it's because they have more power or whether they, cause they've been there longer or whatever. It's like, Oh, this, like my status, my value comes from that. And I'm a better church member than so-and-so over there or, I have this much influence, right? Um, so there's that kind of level of pride. Another way is, I mean, pastors becoming prideful. Prideful because, of, you know, hey, people need them or they perceive that people need them because they go to them with their needs um, and for counseling, for pastoral care. Um, or the pastor can become prideful because, man, aren't I a great communicator? People just love how I communicate or people just love me. Or, man, look how many people are in the building and they must be here all to hear me. Mm -hmm. And all of those things can feed pride for a pastor. Um, And, and then, you know, I mean, and then of course it gets to like kind of the modern day stuff of like, well, look how many followers and, you know, likes and everything else that I've got. Um, And then I think there's other, and again, kind of going back to the other part, like there's other, there's other members in the church and, and like they think that their church is just simply better because they believe the right things or God's presence is more among them or they worship the right way or whatever it may be. And so they actually think they're the best of all churches. Um, and so, yeah, church no doubt has a has, has a pride problem. Do you think every church has some level of this? Yes. OK, absolutely. Like, and you're just going to find it somewhere. You're going to find it somewhere. No matter where you go. No matter where you go. Okay. Whether, you know, whether that's among the staff, whether that's among some of the members. I, yeah, I do think that you're just gen- generally going to find pride at some level, somewhere, because I think you do everywhere Okay. you go. And I hate that it's within the church. Mm-hmm. I will say that because all of this pride, because it leads to pastors falling, leaders falling, church splits. And then all that does is let the let the church or let the world believe the church is no better than them. Mm-hmm. So therefore, why do I need church and why do I need their God? Yeah, and church is definitely better than the rest of them. I mean, <laughs> so yeah, I think no, I, and I think that's the I think that's the problem is because it leads to so much destruction. Mm-hmm. Therefore, it leads to a horrible witness in the world. Right. And, and you're right. And there are people, unfortunately that take the stance of, well, I'm saved. I know God, or we as a church, we're saved. We know God. We're better than those that don't. Is that true? No. Is that objectively true? No. No. Okay. Objectively truth is we're going to, we we know Jesus, those who are saved, born again, because we accepted a gift. 
right, we know Jesus and we're going to heaven, but that doesn't make us any better than someone who doesn't know Jesus. Okay. Yeah. I feel like I've heard the exact opposite of that before, of what you just said. And that doesn't surprise me, unfortunately. Okay. Because I think Christians can think of, like, oh, well, I'm saved. Um, of course right. I'm better. No, you're just saved. You're forgiven. Like, like I don't you... feel much better, even though I've done the saved. Yeah, like, <laughs> we're saved. We're being hopefully transformed into the likeness of Jesus. But I'm not better than somebody else that doesn't know him. 